Hello. So I have uploaded all the material, critical material regarding wife of Bhats prologue, and now we can continue with the explanation as we were doing previously. So this is the next lecture in the series, and uh, this time we'll be doing this section uh, called envy and the power of gold. Now, in one of the previous sections, if you remember, I've told you that. Uh, the wife of Bath's plan is that to accuse her husbands of some sexual misadventures and some uh, relationships outside marriage and not being faithful to their wives. And this was a part of her plan because the, the moment she accuses the husband of not being faithful, the wife of bath won't be accused of the same and behind that accusation wife of bath was actually planning her own sexual misadventures outside marriages some liaisons outside her marriages but we didn't know who the man was he she has told uh, uh, her husband uh, her husband that she uh, there is a man who is his friend who is her friend and it is some time that they walk together and her husband was of course uh, thinking about uh, there is something going on between the male friend and wife of bath he had a suspicion but we don't know who the man was but we knew that wife of bath secretly was suggesting or preparing of some sexual misadventures of her own now keeping that in mind keeping this recap in mind we'll proceed to this section called envy and the power of gold and yet of our apprentice young jenkin for his crisp hair showing like gold so fine because he squires me walking up and down a false suspicion in your mind is sound now we know that there is this man called jenkin and he is the apprentice or the clerk of wife of bath's husband this present husband and wife of bath says that you have a problem with everything and you make a fuss about me and our apprentice jenkin this clerk jenkin you are always suspicious of everything you are always suspicious of your wife while you are spending time with that neighbor's wife and you make a fuss about me and jenkin you are suspicious and simply because he is handsome young jenkin he is young and handsome and he has golden hair he has lovely blonde hair now wife of bath Uh, as you know she always preferred rich old husbands and it is quite possible for someone who is both rich and old a man that he will hire a clerk to uh, see over his accounts now that is the reason old rich men hired clerks now that is jenkin a hired clerk and now wife of bath says that you are suspicious of him you are jealous and this is an old age old age jealousy now old age old age is a uh, is an age of sexual jealousy that is why the old husband will always be jealous of the young jenkin and he says because he squires me walking up and down squires me he accompanies me this jenkin he accompanies wife of bath every time every now and then but this is not an extramarital affair this is not a sexual misadventure wife of bath says that this is just kindness or to be more apt this is medieval chivalry because remember in medieval times women were supposed to be a weaker sex so women are not supposed to be left alone there should always be a man accompanying her wherever she goes and because this old rich husband 
was not accompanying wife of Bath, Jenkin filled in that space of medieval chivalry. Jenkin was chivalrous enough to accompany wife of Bath whenever she goes out. And wife of Bath says that this is just kindness. This is just medieval chivalry. Why are you just so jealous? Because Jenkin is doing this for me. I'd have him not though you were dead tomorrow. And she says that I wouldn't even think about Jenkin even if you die tomorrow. I wouldn't even think about being with him. And why is this? Why is Jenkin not a suitable match for wife of Bath? Here comes the concept of class. Because wife of Bath if her husband dies would be a widow of a wealthy old man and Jenkin would still remain a poor young clerk and for a wealthy widow of an old man to marry a poor young clerk is actually marrying below her class and that was not really entertained in the medieval times. But at the same time, this line, I, I wouldn't think about him if you were dead tomorrow. This is also a dramatic irony because if you have actually read the novel, I, I mean, if you have actually read this poem, you will see this is exactly what happens. Wife of Bath marries Jenkin the, the moment her husband dies. So this line is also a dramatic irony. But tell me this, why do you hide with sorrow the keys to your strong box away from me? Is it my gold? It is my gold as well as yours, Padi. Wife of Bath says, but why do you hide your keys to your iron chest, that strong box where you keep your money? Because this treasure, the money you have, is supposed to be mine as well as yours. Because we are married now. And that was the condition of marriage. Why would you make an idiot of your dame? Now by St. James, but you shall miss your aim. You shall not be, although like mad you scold, master of both my body and my gold. Now wife of Bath says to her husband, why do you want to make a fool of me? Why do you keep your closet, your iron box where you keep your money? Why are you protecting the keys of the chest? Because that's not going to happen. You will not succeed. You will miss your aim. And although you want it so desperately, although you, although like mad you scold, although you want it so desperately, you won't become the master of both my body and gold. You are not going to control both my body and my gold. Now, this section, because it's called the power of gold, this phrase, the power of gold has two implications here. The gold is obviously the property or the money of the husband, the treasure of the husband, which he is keeping inside a strong chest and protecting the keys. That is the property or the wealth of the husband. And gold is also Jenkin, because Jenkin has this blonde golden hair and Jenkins becomes a symbol of wife of Bath's own sexual liberties. So the husband cannot control both. He cannot control his wealth and wife of Bath's sexual liberties. He cannot control both. He can only have one. And this is also the feminist idea of women having to control, having control over their own bodies. And unlike the medieval belief that women were supposed to be submissive, wife of Bath isn't going to be so. And her contract was very clear. Why, when she decides to marry rich old men, the contract was very clear. She gives him her body and he gives her the ownership of his money and property. So this was the contract. It was very clear. The husband isn't going to have both the both his money and wife of Bath's body. It is one or the other. It's a trade. This marriage was a trade. It's like commerce. It's a commercial trade. 
and the contract was clear so now if the husband wants to control both the money and wife of bad's body that is a violation of this contract one you will forgo in spite of both your eyes why need you to seek me out or set on spies i think you'd like to lock me in your chest and she says that any one of these you will have to surrender you will either have to surrender your property your wealth or you lose control over my body so either the control over the gold or the control over over my body you will have to choose any one and why do you need to spy on me all the time and as if you want to lock me in your chest and this locking your lover or locking your wife in your chest this brings to us uh, the concept of love or marriage as ownership and love as a possession of love as an instrument of control or marriage as an instrument of control and this idea of love or marriage as ownership as possession it is an idea that is very deeply rooted in patriarchy so wife of bath when she says when she says against this idea that as if you want to lock me in your chest that men men behave as if they are locking their wives or their lovers in their chest out of love but it is only that that kind of love is only a patriarchal form of control over the women's body over the women's decision you should say dear wife go where you like best amuse yourself i will believe no tales you are my wife alice true and truth prevails so wife of bath now tells her husband what to do that he should say dear wife go and have fun he should give her that freedom i will not believe any rumors about you he will not believe anything any rumors that arise from wife of bath's action he should trust her unconditionally and he should say that you are my true faithful wife alice and that is the only thing you should believe now this is the also the first time in this prologue that wife of bath actually says her name her name is alice or alison in some versions of the text it's alison here it's alice so alice was her name and she wants her husband to say like this that you are my only true faithful wife alice and that is the only thing i believe i will not believe in any rumors please go and have fun you have your liberty so wife of bath tells her husband how to treat her and in extension she also tells the men how to treat their wives she tells the men that your wives need liberty and freedom don't just lock them up in your chest we love no man that guards us or gives charge of where we go for we will be at large now this is wife of bath's speech but this again in extension becomes a voice of women she says that we women we never like our husbands to who try to spy on us husbands who guard us or controls us we don't like those kind of husbands or lovers we want to be free and she points out at the uselessness of trying to keep a woman as a prisoner in a room or in a heart it's all the same women do not like to be prisoners of the lovers and in this way she speaks the women's narrative she speaks for women not only for herself as a woman but all women and this is the reason we call wife of bath as a feminist we call her the first feminist so this is the end of this section we'll proceed again in the next